Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney. Today I have got a craft room and supplies organization video for you. I'm going to show you how I've got everything organized. I'm finally settled in this space and all I have left to do is just cosmetic stuff like flooring, lighting, and painting. So I wanted to share with you whether you have a craft room or not, some tips and tricks on how to get all of your stuff organized. So let's go. Okay, I've shown you a sneak peek of my craft room. Now, before I get into all these organization tips, I need to make some labels. They are long overdue, so I'm gonna start with a quick project to get some bins organized. There are a couple of areas in my craft room that definitely needed a little bit more organization. This area right here where the sticky notes are, I was ready to go ahead and commit and make these into labels. The reason I do sticky notes for several months is to make sure that's the container I want to use, that that's going to fit what I have in there instead of making labels and then pulling them off. So now I'm ready to make the labels for these so that this will look all nice. And I did use my Cricut to help me with this. All I did was go into Cricut Design Space and for these I just wanted to use some removable vinyl which makes it easy to pull them off if I decide to use the container for something else. So I just typed up the different things that I needed these labels to say and I sized them down and then I printed them out on my Cricut and just applied them directly to the bins. I am going to go ahead and start right here with this piece. This is a cubby system from Ikea. It's called the Calyx, K-A-L-L-A-X. I've finally labeled these bins. They've been with sticky notes for the longest time. Um, and then I've got these shoe boxes that I'm ready to go ahead and make some labels as well on my Cricut to get those labeled up. Now, one thing I like about Ikea is they sell different inserts that you can get for their cubby system. So these were cabinet doors, they have drawers, they have like shoe inserts. I've got another one that holds my um, vinyl that I'll show you in a minute. And then these baskets also from Ikea fit perfectly into the cubby system. You can find cubby systems anywhere. Walmart has them, Target has them. So it just kind of depends. Now I'm going to kind of show you some of the organization and ways I store stuff inside of this system. There are certain items that I like to just store in baskets that don't have tops because they're trickier to organize. Now you certainly could organize anything you wanted to, but there's certain stuff that I just feel is not worth my time to try to organize it. Yarn is one of those. I don't use yarn a whole lot, but for me, it's just much easier to store them in an open basket. I literally can dump it out and then shove it back in. Another one that I store in these baskets is going to be a bunch of my rope. I've also got stencils stored in here. So this is just stencils and I keep them in these little Ziploc bags so that I can see the different um, alphabets and things like that. And then of course, any other random crafting tools that are kind of bulky and big. Uh, my large heat gun, there's a saw, a hair dryer in here. So I like to use these open vests, like I said, for items that just take a little more effort, I guess, to organize. As far as these bins go, I do like to use bins that are quick and easy 
to access. So for these, they all came from Home Goods. They have different versions of this and they always seem to have it, but I like them because you just pull the lid off and put it down. What's also nice is they have different sizes and if you, you know, are using bees or something, you could put this in your lap and then use the top as a work surface. So it works really well. I just like that they're easy access and it's just quick and easy, you know, snaps. You just put up the lid and put it back down. Now inside these type baskets that do have lids, I have a bunch of other little um, things like this. And I use these Tupperware snap-on containers. I got these all on Amazon. It came in a pack of different sizes. I put a label on it and I just use this to keep all those little things like magnets and Velcro and chains and clips, all that kind of stuff, all secure, neat in the box. And again, it's one of those <laughs> It's organized inside, but you can kind of just throw it in there if you need to clean up really fast. Another great item to use for storage are these photo boxes. These came from Michaels, which you can usually get them for like five bucks on clearance. If you're short on space, you can definitely get these and stack them up in a closet or put them under the bed. And so I like to use these. They come with the little placard already on there so you can make your labels for it, but they're a great tool to use for storage. Next to this system is my desk, which right here, I just do all my Cricut designs as well as printables. And that is an Alex desk from Ikea. And then to the left of that, I've got another Calyx system and this is everything Cricut. So let me show you what's going on over here. So for this one, the inserts that I got from Ikea are these right here. So this holds all of my vinyl and then um, put on more cabinet doors. Now for this, something like this, there's a couple different options. You certainly could put labels on the outside of the doors or hang tags, but I do this really weird system. So let me show you what I do so that I know what's behind door number one. So each one of these, when you open it up, I've got sticky notes right here that tell me what is inside the cubby. And this is how I memorize what is in the cubbies. So again, with the sticky notes, I leave them up for quite a while to make sure this is where I want the stuff. And then once I've got it memorized, I just pull those off. Sometimes I'll leave them on there because if I run out of something and I pull the sticky note off, I'll know something is missing in there. So I actually am not planning to put any labels or do anything. I'm just going to memorize what all is in these cabinets so that's what I do what would you do if this was your system would you go ahead and put labels on the outside or would you just memorize it now let me show you a couple other inserts I got now this one um, for the 12 by 12 cardstock came from Amazon and it fits perfectly in the cubby I've got some more bends my Cricut markers, I just have them stored right here. Um, I store them with the tips down so they don't get dried out. And then I have one more paper cardstock insert. This also came from Amazon and it's just colored cardstock. And then all the stuff that's down here in these cabinets, like my heat press is right there. I've got sticker paper, um, specialty papers, and then down on the bottom, it's all like my Cricut blanks, things to make projects with. So that is what's happening on this system over here. And then I've got some Cricut machines up top and my Joy is sitting underneath that little cover. Over here, this is across from my desk and the Cricut stuff. So I've got another, this is another Alex desk and I've got two of my Cricut machines on there. And then underneath I store fabric. So let me show you how I handle fabric. So for fabric, this is how I store it. Now I do have a huge box with fabric, but for each season, I like to pull out pieces of fabric that I think I would want to use if I do want to use fabric. So this is just one of those file folder holders <laughs> that you can get pretty much anywhere. And then inside I've got the little file folder um, the actual little hanging file folders and I just drape the fabric. So like for this one, I just drape it inside and then I can put pieces all over it and it just hangs nicely and I can always see it and know what fabrics that I've got for the different seasons. Continuing to move around the room, this is my craft desk. So this came from uh, Walmart. It's a Better Homes and Garden desk and I really like it because it's two-sided. So on this side, you've got shelves and drawer and then on the other side, you also have a shelf and a drawer. But what I really like is it's got 
this cabinet above it, and then a built-in pegboard. So pegboards are another great way to store items. You could buy some decorative ones online that are already framed out, or of course you could always just go to the hardware store and pick one up and then cut it down to size. You could put these in a closet, um, just pretty much anywhere you have wall space. And then all the little insert things, you can buy those on Amazon really easily to help store all of your items. All right, a couple of must-haves um, organization tips for your craft space. First one is this power strip. I know I've shown it before, but this is a tabletop power strip. It comes with two USBs and then a place to plug in three different plugs. Again, I will try to link everything I can that I've shown you, and if I forget, just drop it in the comments and I'll try to find you a link for it. But you just clamp it on to your tabletop. This is just really nice because Honestly, if you think about it, you don't have to get under your table and unplug. It saves time. You can just quickly, easily change out plugs, charge your phone, do all of that good stuff. And then another thing is a silicone mat for your work area. I absolutely love having this because it's heat resistant. It's also easy to clean. You can just paint directly on it and then wipe it off. So I love having that. And now for the little hidden gem in this area. Let me get down here so I can show you. So underneath your workspace, which you wouldn't think is like a huge thing, but I always have a little light. So that way, if you drop something, you like a little needle or something, you can easily find it underneath your table. It's hidden. I had this in my other craft room as well. You can get these anywhere from Amazon or the hardware store or what have you, but definitely a little table um, top light to put underneath your desk. All right, and then of course the carousel, you've, I don't know, I have a couple of these throughout the room. Michael's makes a really big one that I used to have, but I just went ahead and got some smaller ones. So this just holds all my different types of scissors so that they're right there and accessible. And then another thing that is a good storage piece is some type of two-tier tray. This is nice because then you just get vertical storage. It doesn't take up a lot of space as far as width wise, but you can have vertical storage. So in this one, I just keep my heat gun handy, my bigger glue gun. This is my um, idea notebook that I have all my projects listed in and sketched out and stuff. Some pencils, a little ring holder, and then of course, you know, some flowers to make it sort of pretty. Moving around from my desk, I've just got a table that holds my sewing machine. I've got my laser cutter, and then I've got this piece. This is just a TV stand that I got at American Furniture, and it just holds random stuff like for soap making supplies, candle making supplies, and then I wanna kinda of show you how I store my other paint, the paints that I don't use very often. For my other paints, these are the paints I don't use very often. What I do for these is, as soon as I open it, I put a little bit of paint on my finger and then I just put it on here so that way it dries and I can tell what the colors are really easily. Because honestly, if you grab this, sometimes you can't really tell just by looking at the bottle and then you open the cap. So by putting it on there and letting it dry, you kind of have a more accurate uh, reflection of what the paint color is and then the ones that don't have anything I know those are new bottles that I haven't opened yet but this is an easy way you could certainly put this in if you don't have a craft room and some under bed storage and it can just slide under you can easily grab what colors you need and then start painting here is my other piece of furniture this is a system also from Ikea so it's two bookshelves and a dresser and for this one I've got a lot of decorative stuff I've got some canisters that I just made some decals to decorate those themselves as well as just some decor pieces. Beads I like to leave out in mason jars because I think it's easy to kind of see what I've got. Twine and then these are my specialty hot glue fabric wood and foam hot glue that I use and then just some more decor pieces. Inside the cabinets I've got these um, Locker bins from Dollar Tree, and then I just made some labels for them. I like these, again, because it's just quick, easy access. I can see what's in it and toss things around and clean it up really fast. So I just kind of like to have things that are open instead of a bunch of stuff with lids. And then down here, I've just got extra like holiday scrapbook paper and some random stuff that I just don't use. 
For the labels on the bins, I did not hand write that. I did use my Cricut for that. And what was really easy about it is Cricut has so many different templates that you can choose from. So you can choose some different and fun size labels if you want to. So I picked the one that I liked, made sure that that one was just on basic cut. For the text, I went ahead and filled in the text, picked the color of the ink that I wanted to use. And then I made sure to pick a writing font and then I selected draw so that the pen would actually write on the label and then the Cricut machine knew to cut out the label. And so that's what I did for those. Just something fun. You could certainly do all kinds of different colors if you wanted to. And some of the fonts are really fun. So you could definitely have some really whimsical looking labels. For ribbon storage, I picked up these two things from Joann's. You can hang them on the wall if you want to, and it's just little dowel rods that you can just click into place and put your ribbon on there. So I've got my ribbon stored like that. And then these two things, it's actually two things, they came from Ikea and they can also hang on the wall. You get the hardware and stuff to hang them on the wall or you could put them in a closet if you needed to. I made some decals for this and all this is is I just did one and in the middle because it's like winter, spring, they go all the way across and it holds all of my garlands. So that's what I use this little drawer system for. And then over here, I've got more decor pieces and some more paint. Dressers are another great way to store items. You can get them from really cheap, from thrift stores, um, Facebook Marketplace. So um, this one right here, I just throw my glue guns in there. There's no real organization involved with that. But for this one, this is all random wood pieces, wood blocks, Jenga blocks. And I like to store them in plastic bags because it's easier to see, it's easy to clean up. I literally can just throw the stuff in there and not have to worry about it. I mean, you could take the time to make it super neat, but I won't keep that clean. But so for me, this is about the best the organization gets, but it definitely makes it easy to find what I have by putting them in clear bags. And then this one down here is just more wood pieces from Dollar Tree, random places, some little mini signs. Guess what? More wood pieces. And then this drawer holds all of the little wooden cutouts from Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Dollar Tree. I just use the refrigerator bins to keep them separated by seasons. And um, I like to have these kind of accessible because we start DIY season so early, it's better to have them not packed away somewhere so I can just grab them out. And then just different glues, again, using these little Dollar Tree bins to store all of those. So on this side, I've got more of these canisters. These came from Hobby Lobby and all I did was add knobs to them and it just stores random stuff and I cut out some decals on my Cricut. And then for the paint that I use most often, I've got that stored right here on one of these adjustable risers so it can go wide or skinny. I just like putting paint on these, um, especially the ones that I use often because it's easier to see them and kind of see what I have. All right, so in the middle here, I've got this random table. This is my kids' craft table. I just let them have their own little floating craft island here in the middle of everything. So this is where they'll come and do crafts if they need to do something. So that's what that table is. And then moving over here, let me show you what's going on over here. I've got these bins. So one way to organize projects that I'm working on is to put them in these Dollar Tree bins. This is all stuff for the mystery box, which by now, when you're watching this, has already gone up. But it's an easy way to just throw the supplies you need in for a project. You can pick it up, go work on it. And if you get tired of it, put it down, grab another bin, work on it. But it's an easy way to clean up too, because you can just throw all the items if you're not finished working on the project in a bin. And then on top of this table, I've got a huge wooden toolbox. This thing came from Hobby Lobby and it's um, separated out. I've decided, I used to just keep all my markers put away and I would just never use them very often because I just wouldn't think about it. But now I literally have all the markers, paint markers, chalk markers, fabric markers, map pencils, Sharpies, all the markers out. And again, this is something that you could tote around if you needed to, it's a little big, but you can find smaller toolboxes and kind of set up the same way to organize all your pens and pencils. 
Now, another thing, whether you have your own craft room or not, that would be helpful in storing things um, are rolling carts. Now, this one right here used to hold my paint, but for now, what this one does is when I'm done working on projects, I just put all the supplies I've used on this cart and then I walk around like a librarian and, and reshelf everything <laughs> and put it away. It's on wheels, so I just roll that around. And then you may remember in my last craft room, well, actually two craft rooms ago, I had what I called my crash cart. And that was one of those cards, I'll show it to you in just a minute, that um, because I worked at a table, I had all my supplies on there that I use frequently. And so it was easy just to roll it to the table and then work. And then I can just roll it and put it in a closet or hide it if you know you don't have your own designated space. So this is the cart I was just talking about, my previous crash cart um, that I used to have just basic supplies on. Now what this one holds is whatever season or type project I'm working on, the stuff that I pick up, I, this is not organized. So, I mean, as organized as it is, it's on a cart. That's about as good as it gets. I can wheel it over to my craft table and see the items by digging through it, but I, I don't take the time to organize it. But for right now, I used to have Christmas on it and now it has all winter stuff and then Valentine stuff will go on it and Easter. So I got this cart at Costco quite a while ago, but I'm sure you guys have seen Target, Walmart, um, Amazon. You can pick up these roller carts pretty much anywhere. And the last area in my craft room is this right here. It used to be a 1980s wet bar. I did do a makeover video on this. So this is just kind of my paint washing station. A um, couple of things here. I have one of these makeup brush cleaners from Dollar Tree. It's got suction cups on it. So I just leave that at the bottom of the sink and it makes it really easy to clean off my paint brushes. And then I picked up this little dry rack um, with the pad. It was a two pack from Home Goods. Just added a little vinyl decal to it. And so after I'm done washing my brushes, they can dry. And then another storage thing is, again, if you have wall space, you can find really cute containers. This one came from Hobby Lobby and it just has all my sponge brushes on it. So use that wall space. And then I just made some labels for in here. And that's pretty much this area. And there you have it, a tour of my craft space. Like I said, all I have left to do is cosmetic work. Let me know down below in the comments if you have a crafting tip or organization tip that you would like to share when it comes to supplies. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. I will link down below my previous craft room tour. There are some ideas in there that were not shared in today's video that might work for you. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.